46. What is up guys? Welcome back to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. I'm Wade Lumsden. This is my dad, Chris nice Lumsden. Sticker. See? Nice sticker. Nice yeah, sticker. Yeah. Important part. <laughs> Another sticker. Uh, we are uh, still on the hobby stock slash temporary modified motor um, and we are doing the can shaft. So I'm going to hand this over to the old guy here and uh, try not we're going to gonna try not to drop it. We're going to get to work. We are going to be shoving a camshaft in this thing. Um, we have lubed up the uh, cam bearings all through the block. Uh, that's a lot easier to do before you put the crankshaft in, so um, do that. Uh, <laughs> but at the moment, what we're going through is oiling up the cam. Journals. Journals. Not yeah. the lobes. Not the lobes, just the journals for right now. Yeah. Um, we have a special lube that came with the cam for the journals, or it's for the lobes. This lube came for the lobes. Um, we're just gonna use the same Clevite stuff we used for the bearings uh, for all of the journals. Give me some no. lobe lube. And then we're gonna get this thing installed. Um, now we're gonna do the lobe lube and go from there. So hold on guys. All right, sorry, we got the first half uh, lubed up here. We're gonna go ahead and start stabbing it. Um, and then we will lube up the second half after it's sitting in there. So we're gonna get this cam journal set back into the second one. Be nice and easy about it. You might have to twist your cam a little bit. Right there. there you go. But now it's sitting there nice and solid and the rest of it's sticking out. We should be able to just have at putting some lube on here. Do you want it in your hand or right on the cam? I don't care. All right. Get kind of. This is a greasy process. There's cleaner ways of doing this, but hey, we don't do this to stay clean, do we? No. Or rather, maybe I have you do this so I stay clean. Yeah. Is that a good? <laughs> so. I think that's good. Cool. It gives you a little bit left to put on the bottom of your lifters when we put them in. Yep. Okay. We're gonna shove this in the rest of the way here. So nice and easy. You don't want to force nothing or jam nothing. That's why I like to do it before the crank's in there. Yeah, he likes to put them in before the crank's in. Um, I got a little overzealous and shoved the crank in. So. I might have to put the, uh, the gear on it, maybe? You need uh, a handle? Yeah. They make a nice handle that you can buy to shove in there. We're going to get a bolt and we're going to use the bolt to shove it the rest of the way in. So uh, let me do that for him. Alrighty. A uh, little chaotic. Here, <laughs> start off with that one. Um, That's the one I did the floor with. <laughs> oh, well, your hands are worse shaped than the floor was when you wiped it up. All right. Cam is in. Uh, we got it shoved back in there, which is awesome. We're, we'll clean up some, this assembly lube on this surface that's just a matter of wiping it down so cams in he is correct it is way easier to do the cam first um before I mean, but there's guys that shove cams into motors all the time inside the front of a car so that's right so it's not a not a huge thing you just gotta you know be gentle be so gentle you when you do it scar up your cam bearings yeah but it is easier to do first but i was i don't know i was i jumped the gun and wanted to shove the uh the crank in there so um and if we'd have done it before we put the pistons in yeah that too this makes it that was last video if you haven't seen that video go check it out um anyways now that that's in uh i think we have a nice um double roller where did i put it i had a nice double roller ah here it is all right so i've never used this brand before he's cleaning up his hands we did this the dirty way. Uh, 
I got myself a manly performance timing chain kit. This was the cheapest double roller timing chain that they had in stock at Summit that would also allow you to degree your cam. So, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and do that and we will uh, we'll degree the cam. I'll show you how to do that real quick. I degreed it already. I felt it was pretty cold. It was cold? cold. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, my guess would be 60 degrees. 60? <laughs> I don't like where this is going. <laughs> so anyways, uh, we'll go through the process of degreeing this cam and uh, uh, and that'll be pretty much this video. Um, sliding cams in, just make sure you're nice and gentle with it. You don't want to bounce it around a whole lot um, and make sure you lube the absolute piss out of it. So um, can't have enough lube for the camshaft, right? Nope. So. Never heard it. All right, we're going to get set up doing... The, I'm not going to show you how to set up the tool and all that stuff, but we're going to get set up to do it and uh, show you how to do it real quick. All right, guys. So we actually degreed this cam already, um, but it's it's off. We got to turn it. So um, we'll show you real quick how we did that and all that jazz, all of our nice, wonderful setup that we got going here. But we got to pull this gear off. Figured it'd be cool to show you pulling the gear off um, and then uh, advancing it because we got to advance it four degrees uh before we uh, uh continue on so we'll get that pulled off we had to go buy um some cherry limeades and uh a puller because i didn't have a puller so we'll get this thing yanked and uh, go back to degreeing this cam huh so excited <laughs> not too bad one of those to pull that uh, we had to use a piece of flat strap because this thing's got a sharp point on it and didn't have the nice roundy thing but it's just a four inch puller from O'Reilly's so not bad um, I guess we got a marred up uh, key uh, so we're gonna clean that up real quick and then we'll I can't get everything it. shoved back on there alrighty ladies and gentlemen um, like I said, we've already uh, degreed this and we decided that it need, it was 40, 4 degrees retarded, so we need to advance it 4 degrees. Uh, we got the timeable uh, timing chain. All we got to do is go to the A keyway instead of this regular one. And then instead of lining up the timing chain with the dot like normal, we'd line it up with the A. With The, do uh, the dot will still be up on the bigger gear and then we use the A on the smaller gear. Um, and it should line up and be be butamous so let's get this thing installed we're just gonna tap this bad boy on I put that big sock away <laughs> already <laughs> Here we go. All right, again, we're just doing this to, to degree it. Um, normally, we would uh, um, lock tight these bolts and stuff into place. Well, we use a tab lock on them. Tab lock, yeah, but we don't necessarily need to do that yet until we have everything all figured out your bottom chain ain't on yeah i'm eyeballing stuff here oh, give me a break.
That looks off to me. <laughs> yeah, well, when you turn that a tiny bit, it'll line up. You're good. Yeah, and all I ever put in is one bolt. Oh, to figure it out? Yeah, to check it. Okay. You put two in if you want, but I think one's good. Just snug it up a little bit to work. Yeah. <clears throat> Where's my ratchet? Alrighty, so gonna degree this thing we got a cool little tool up here uh, homemade by my brother it's got a little stop it stops your piston um, in in the same same spot each time so we're gonna rotate this until we come up and touch it we're touching the piston nice and soft and then we're gonna take a reading and our reading right now is 15, 15 a small number 15 degrees yep 15 degrees now we're gonna rotate it to be 180 out and we're gonna come up and we are, again, we are at, we're at like 11 degrees. So we're gonna take 15, subtract off the 11, gives us four. We're gonna take four, divide it by two, and that's gonna give us two. <laughs> so now we're gonna rotate this back over to close to top dead center. And back this off. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna back the the stop off. Stick my finger cool. and get it chopped okay. off. So now we line this up at two degrees. Two degrees. The only reason why we're so close is because we've already done this before and this was already mounted on here nice and centered. So now that we're at two degrees, we're going to loosen this up and we are going to center this at zero. This should be top dead center. And if we look at the piston, feel it, you can find it with a dial indicator if you want, but with your fingers, you can tell that's, that is top dead center. So now that we have that. Yeah, you gotta come back over here too. Yeah, I, just, I was moving it. Yeah, no, and it's a little it's good. wobbly. Yeah, it's a little wobbly. It's wobbly on the crank. Here. So, okay, so now let's. Um, all right, so now that we have that, we need to find the high point in the lifter. Grab this. When I say find the high point in the lifter, I'm talking about this right here, this dial indicator, you get it all nice and set up. They have really cool setups you can do this with, but you gotta. Prep a lifter, put the lifter in, um, get your dial indicator set on there properly to where it's gonna read right. And now we are going to rotate the crank until we find the high point. Should take a couple turns. Here we go, now we're coming up. So we're gonna find the high point. Oh, that was it right there. See how it, it stopped coming up and then it went back. So our high point is at two. So now we're gonna zero this. Okay, so now we're at zero. So now we're gonna go 50 thousandths past. So where it comes down to the 50, right there. And then we're gonna come over here you know when you think you know how to do something and then you go to do it and you go to explain people go to explain it to people and you f it up completely that has been the epitome of this project hasn't it yes at least working with me right so <laughs> and i figure it's college paid off for a while yeah right 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 right, right. Adding oh man my numbers were way off <laughs> so what we're gonna do here dad i'm gonna let you hold the camera Oh, I can handle that part. Okay, there. yeah, just point. Try not to stick my fingers point in Point and shoot, point and shoot. All right, so right now, we are currently sitting at the peak on our dial indicator, okay? The peak of our dial indicator is at, um, currently it's at, we're using the small numbers for the valves, 74, right? 74. So, now what we're gonna do is measure 
the uh, actual center line and where that's at. So we're gonna go 50 thousandths past. Actually, that was, yeah, make sure I'm centered there, okay. We're gonna go 50 thousandths past, which is right there. Read on the small number is gonna be 50, Ooh, doo, 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 five, six, seven, 57, right? 57, that's our small number, okay? Now we gotta go backwards. Since we're cranking it backwards, we gotta go past the 50 thousandths mark and then come back to it the proper direction, the clockwise direction. Barely get on it. Come on, little, little more. There we go. All right, and now we're gonna read this small number again. And it is 30, one and a half, 32, somewhere in there. So 54 plus 32 is 86. I thought it was 57. Was it 57? Oh, 57 plus 32. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, is going to be uh, 89. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're double checking all of my math. So 89, and then we're going to. Be, should be able to rotate, uh, divide that by two, right? Uh, which gives us 40, five. yeah, 44 and a half, 45. So now using the small numbers, we're gonna come to 45, right there. Oh, no, 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 we gotta keep going, right? That's the wrong 45. We stop this at the at the peak, and we should be reading. No, I messed something up. What did I mess up? Oh, I bust the rest instead of. Uh, okay, here. No, no, I read the thirty instead of the yes, or um, the other one instead of the hundred and whatever the hell it was. I read the smaller of it. Right. So you got to do that right, I guess. So we got. On this side, we got 32. This one's definitely 32. That one's definitely 32. Then we'll go back to the uh, 050. I chose the wrong one. I, I read it as 57 instead of 123 is where I went wrong. All right. So 123 plus what the heck was the other number? 34. 34. 157. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Were you looking to me to give you the answer? <laughs> yes, I was. I felt like you were cheating there. I was. Or something. 157. Divided by two. Divided by two. Let's round it up to 158. Yeah. Divided right. by two is 79. 79. So we should be able to rotate this to 79. Correct? Yes. This the other direction. Oh, yeah. We got to go backwards. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I gotta go too. Yeah, I right? know. You yeah, gotta yeah. go back and then to so it. 79. Boom, right there. Technically, that should be uh 79 is gonna be over here, so that, oh. that's 60 on that side. Yeah, you're right. There you go. Reading these wheels backwards. So this should be so at one at 79. Man, after we do all that math, this should be the peak which is our zero point on the dial indicator. And it is. Good job. Bam. Man, that's like pulling teeth. Yes. Oh. Okay. So we had to advance this four degrees. Um, that was an option in the timing chain set uh, to get it to be dead on. When we first, first did it, it read um, four degrees off, right? So when we found the peak point, we, we brought it back up to the peak point. It was then four degrees off of what we wanted. Um, and we're like, oh dang, we gotta rotate this thing. So um, our kit allowed us to advance it four degrees more or retard it four degrees more. Um, we had to advance it four degrees. So um, now you might've noticed it looked like we were using a regular, a regular bolt. I'm gonna use, we have a cam button uh, this is a cam button, a nice aluminum cam button, and it's got a retainer on it, like that. Uh, what this does is when you bolt it in place here, 
This cam button rides up against the timing chain cover, um, or rather, right up, yeah, right up against, and it keeps the cam from walking back and forth. So we're going to use this cam button. That's why uh, my dad was pointing out earlier. These are not a shouldered bolt, right? These are just a regular bolt because we're using this, and this locks that in place. Normally on a regular timing chain if you're not going to use a cam button or a locking setup like this you would want um you would want to use a shouldered bolt and blue loctite right that's what i use yes. yeah a good blue loctite to keep that from coming apart but uh really that stuff is super simple um us just bolting that on in place um this is kind of all my my janky setup give you a rundown of the how I had this all prepped. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how I built my kit. Uh, so if you want to do it at home, you can do it too. If you want to struggle through it at home like I did, you can do it too. The great thing is, is if you get your math wrong, like there's no way that you're going to do this and be 30 degrees off, you know, 25 degrees. And yet, unless you got some crazy wonky custom cam that somebody did something weird for, right? Like, there's a sanity check by checking your numbers on your um, on your cam card versus what you're getting all right so I guess first things first here um, kind of show you how I built my my kit for this um, I went and got myself a, a summit racing equipment wheel a nice little, little aluminum jabby here all marked out um, got that and then got myself the crank socket um, all, all of these things I got separate with the, uh, this wheel, you got the, the seats, um, to be able to do what we did, but with the heads on, uh, be able to degree your cam with your heads on. Um, but this is missing something. So the wheel and the seats came, uh, together and then the socket came as its own deal. Um, then I got this uh, trick flow kit here that came with the pointer. Uh, this came with the springs to be able to use those seats. So basically you put these in place of your um, valve springs. So it's nice and soft going up and down uh, uh, to be able to do it like right there at the valve. And then this little jobby here screws in, uh, sorry, this one, this little jobby here screws into your spark plug hole, and then you can use this to drive down and stop the piston that way. Um, what we used was um, a homemade deal that my brother made, a flat piece of aluminum, okay, bolt that screws in, screws down, we put a nut on it so we can control how much that goes down and in little slides and then this just sits flat on the cylinder so if you're going to do it with the heads off you're going to need something to stop your cylinder heads uh, sorry something to stop your piston um, in place of uh, this stop that's this stop that screws into your cylinder head so this was a homemade jobby um, and then that's basically the kit all right there i think all total uh invested i have like 70 or 80 bucks um, into getting all of that stuff versus buying like the nice comp cam set that was like $450. So you can piece yourself one together. Uh, just make sure you get all the pieces that you need to make it work. Um, and like I said, I will explain here kind of step by step. I know my videos aren't really DIY, do it yourself. I'm not really trying to give you instructions on how to do stuff, but um, that was really chaotic for us to uh, do that. Yeah, I, I don't suggest you use my video as a how-to. There's going to be a bazillion other videos out there on how to degree a cam that are going to be way better, way more in-depth, way more step-by-step. In fact, it's probably been, I don't know, the last motor we had to build was probably six years ago. Yeah, it's been a while, been a long while since we had to build a motor. Um, and uh, five years ago at least, you know. And these are skills that you gotta remind yourself how to use. So 
um, we fumbled through it a little bit but we finally got there type of deal so um, definitely go through and watch those other videos that are out there um, I, I highly suggest it uh, but I guess the point of this video was to show you that we actually um, in, in uh, most of my motors and stuff we actually do that um, in the past uh, we've been completely fine with just running the the cam head up heads up you know and not bothering to um, degree it but that's you know it, it uh, to each their own I guess we've had motors run really good like that and we've had uh, motors run really good after we've degreed the cam so it's kind of a I guess it's a preference deal what you're gonna spend money on what you're gonna spend time on um, and what kind of performance you're looking out of uh, looking for out of your motor so yeah uh, I know it's a long video to be kind of convoluted and not really give you all of the details you want all of the details you need uh, but when you buy one of these degree wheels there's destructions go watch those other YouTube videos um, I'm really happy my dad was here um, to check my sanity and to my math because I I was not on that today uh, at all oh my goodness um, and uh, use a calculator guys <laughs> or write things down like I think that was my problem I was just thinking about too many things at the same time oh well it is what it is um, so yeah uh, I guess other setup tips the pointer uh, the closer you get it to your wheel the more accurate your reading is going to be um, and uh, yeah you can make yourself a kit and you know degree your cams uh, time your cams so with that being said uh, we've gotten to a point here pistons are in cranks in obviously uh, timing chain camshaft that is in uh, I don't think we showed you the button so here's the button installed it's got the little fold over tabs that's the only reason why we're not using a shouldered bolt there um, we should be ready to rock and roll with all that I'm gonna cover this up with a bag uh, so nothing it doesn't get dirty doesn't get any dirt in it uh, I have heads to clean up and uh, oil pan and stuff to order uh, to continue moving forward and we'll go over that stuff in another video but uh, I think we're at a stopping point for today thank goodness I'm exhausted um, <laughs> anyways uh thanks for watching guys uh don't forget to like and subscribe any questions comments concerns down below um again not a not exactly a how-to video just kind of a a brush of of we're do we did it <laughs> kind of how we did it um so uh but what's important right now that i'm gonna do is since i've hit this point I will take the time to pull out my notebook and write down the details about uh, about this engine, the pistons used, uh, the rings used, the timing chain used, the fact that it, we had to advance it four degrees, uh, the crank that was used. Uh, over here we have details uh, written in Sharpie that the block was decked to that so that'll get written down so it doesn't get forgotten um, really important when you're doing your builds especially if you're building multiple motors and you're part of a big team or something like that um, or even if you're you intend on working on your stuff later take as many notes as possible um, we talked about uh, rod bolt stretch man write those numbers down so you know what they are so the next time you pull it apart you can compare it um, I mean all of that stuff you're going to you're you're gonna do that happy stuff um, we, we talked about we talked about um, deck height comparing deck height to the piston um, so you can calculate I mean I don't think I directly said it but you can calculate your quench right the distance between the piston and the, the uh, bottom of the head right and with the thickness of the head gasket that's your quench um, to get that you need to measure it 
and to measure it you got to know um, you got to know what the distance is so this piston doesn't pop out but you got to know what the difference is between the height of the deck and the height of the piston so um, I don't know maybe we'll do that in another video but yeah this one's getting pretty long so thanks for watching guys I appreciate you we'll catch you next video peace